Approval processes are often a fundamental part of everyday work, and when working in Confluence, this is no different. Depending on your organization's policies, procedures, or general ways of working, you may require different types of approval processes for the documents you're working on in Confluence. Some of these approval processes may be single stage and fairly simple, or others may require a more complex, multi-stage process of approval before a document can be signed off. Whichever process you need, Workflows for Confluence makes it quick and easy to set this up the way that works for you and your organization. In this video, I'll walk you through how to create a simple, single stage approval process, and then we'll add it to a Confluence page and show you it in action. But if you're looking for a more complex, multi-stage approval workflow, don't worry. Follow the link to the video on the screen, and this will display another video tutorial where we'll cover this in more detail. So with that being said, let's jump in. To begin, I'm going to jump into the Workflows Manager so that we can access the Workflow Builder. But first things first, I need to be either a Confluence system admin or a space admin to build workflows in Workflows for Confluence. And in this video, we'll build it from the perspective of a Confluence system admin. But as mentioned, you can also do this in the space settings as a space admin. So we're going to go into the global configuration settings. And on the left hand side, we're going to click into workflows. Now this brings up the workflows manager. And now that we're here, we're going to start by creating a very simple single stage approval workflow. So start by clicking create here, and this is where you can give your workflow a name and a description. It's definitely worth adding a description to your workflows because these will appear in the table behind and help other Confluence users understand what the workflow is for and whether they should be using it. It can also really help differentiate the different workflows you have in your Confluence system, especially if you have some that are similar to each other. So for this workflow, we'll call it simple approval workflow, and we'll give it a short description. Once you've added the name and description, click create, and this will open the workflow builder. Now, here we have a completely blank canvas to build the workflows that we need. And on the left-hand side, you'll notice all the different triggers, logic, and actions available, but we're not going to go through all of these now. And if you want to learn more about them, I'd highly recommend you watch the workflow builder video that's linked in the video description below. So as mentioned, for this workflow, we're going to create a single stage approval process that goes to one person for their approval. And first, we need to start with the create or the start trigger node and place that at the top of the canvas here. Next, we'll need to add the statuses that the page will transition through. And in this example, we'll keep it really simple and go for draft as the first transition. So let's just drag a status node onto here and rename it draft. Next up, we need to add the review cycle. And on the left here, you have the approval node. So we just need to drag that onto the canvas and then move that into position and we'll rename this one in review. And finally, we need to add some decision steps. So whether a document is approved or rejected, just grab the status node here, drag that into position, we'll rename this one approved and do the same again for rejected. So we have the outline of a very simple approval workflow. It goes for a single stage, as you can see with the in review part of the workflow and then it moves to either approved or rejected. And all of these statuses will be visible within the Confluence page. So it's really clear to your entire team at what stage the document is in. So let's click into the status node at the top here and draft. And on the right hand side, a panel will open, giving you different options for configuration at this status. This is obviously where we added the name draft, but you can see other options available. So there's things that you can do if the page gets edited at this point you can have expirations at this status. And if you go into the conditions tab, you can limit which users or groups in Confluence can actually move pages through a workflow, which gives you added control. And under the extra tab, we can change the color of the status. And for this example, we'll just change it to purple. Next, we need to set up the approval step or the review step. So we'll click into in review. And here again, you can see the panel opening on the right hand side. But the difference now is you're presented with a few more options. You can see some of the options from before, but you can also see other ones like email on action, or email on expiry. Under the approval tab, here is where you add your reviewers. So you can either add Confluence users or Confluence groups, and it's entirely up to you. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll just add myself as a single reviewer, and that is it. Looking a bit further down, there are other configuration options, and just a few to point out. You can have the quorum size and you can adjust that. So if you had multiple approvers, 
in a document review cycle, but you only needed a small subset of those people to approve the document for it to be approved, then you could set the relevant quorum size to account for that. And finally, you might notice the approval token on action feature. This is basically an authenticated approval. So if you need a more verified approval using a two-factor authenticated method, if you enable this feature, then that will trigger that at the stage of the review process. And finally, under extra, we have the colors. So here, we'll just change this to orange. Great, and all we need to do now is just make sure that the colors of approved and rejected are correct. And there we have it. Before we connect the workflow together, on the left hand side, you'll notice different actions that you can add into the workflow. For this example, we're just gonna keep it super simple and not include any actions. But if you want to know more about these, we have extensive user guides and documentation talking you through the different actions that are available. So I'd highly recommend that you take a look at those user guides. The last step is just to connect the different stages of the workflow together like so and just like that we have the workflow and it's ready to go so the final step is to click save workflow this will then appear in the workflows table here under simple approval workflow and by default you can see that this workflow is inactive and we need to activate it to be able to use it it's just a simple toggle there and now this workflow is ready to use at a global level. So any page in Confluence can now add this workflow to it. So that takes us on to the final step and that's going to a Confluence page and adding this workflow. So I'll quickly navigate to a Confluence page. And now we're at the page. At the top of the screen, you can see this apply workflow option. And this is how you manually add workflows to a page. If you wish to automate this process and add workflows automatically to pages, Again, I'd highly recommend you check out our other tutorial video, which is linked in the video description below, which will talk you through how to automate that process. So let's start by clicking apply workflow here and we'll follow the prompt to apply workflow. This will bring up a full list of the global workflows that are available. It will also show any space level workflows you have as well. If we scroll down, we just want to find the simple approval workflow here, click on this and then select apply. That will refresh the page and what you'll notice at the top of the screen is the status has updated and it is now updated to draft, which is the first stage in the workflow that we created. If I click into this workflow status, you'll notice it will give me the option to transition it to the next stage and that was in review. So I'll go ahead and do this and transition the workflow to in review and the status will update accordingly as well. So now we're in the in review cycle and as the reviewer, I would have received an email asking me to go to this page and review it because there is a document waiting for my approval. So I'll go ahead and click into this and this will bring up a small window that shows I'm the approver, it's currently pending with me and as you can see here, I have two actions, approve or reject. So if I go ahead and press approved, I can add a comment here if I wish. In this example, I'll just approve without a comment and click approve. The workflow will transition to the next stage, which is approved. The page is auto refreshed and the status at the top has updated accordingly. And there you have it, we're at the end of a very simple single stage approval workflow. And just like that, we're done. That's a super quick run through on how to build your own simple document approval processes using Workflows for Confluence. If you're new to Workflows and considering trying it out, you can get a free 30 day trial on the Atlassian Marketplace by following the link in the video description below. And just remember, we're here to help you get the most out of Workflows. So if you want to learn more about any of the features, be sure to check out our user guide by following the link shown on screen now. Or if you have any questions, just send an email to support at atfox.io and one of our customer support team will be happy to help.